This video takes a look at a battery start on the Citation Mustang. Remember, the maximum altitude for a battery start is 10,000 feet and the maximum tailwind component is 10 knots. As per the checklist, we must ensure both generator switches are on gen, avionics is turned off, lighting is required, and the air conditioning is also off. As the Mustang has FADEC, our primary purpose as pilots is to monitor the start and be prepared to abort if something abnormal occurs. For this reason, we keep our hand on the throttle, ready to cut off the engine at all times during the start procedure. Immediately prior to start, check you have a minimum of 24 volts, and we have the appropriate cast messages. This is normally four for a battery start, and can be up to five messages if ADSB is installed. The start itself is a three-step process. First, start a timer. Second, engage the starter. And third, lift the throttle out of cutoff to idle. The FADEC takes care of the rest. Now monitoring the start initially has three stages. First, we look for an N2 rotation followed by an ignition enunciation. And then we want to see a rise in ITT within 10 seconds. Now we monitor the ITT to ensure it does not exceed limits. Once the ITT looks good, check for fuel flow, N1, and a rise in oil pressure. We must have this N1 indication by the time we reach 40% of N2. The start sequence is complete when the N2 digits change from white to green and the starter and starter disengaged light are both extinguished. A stabilized idle should be reached within 45 seconds of an engine start. Before starting the second engine, the charge to the battery must be less than 100 amps, so we know it has adequate capacity to start. As the second engine start is a generator-assisted battery start, we must bring the operating engine up to 60% N2 to ensure adequate power to the operating generator. Once again, we go through the three-step start process. First, start the timer. Second, engage the starter on the appropriate engine. Note that all three lights are illuminated on the start panel, reflecting the starter relay on the operating engine is also closed. And third, lift the throttle out of cutoff to idle. Once again, we look for N2 rotation, ignition, and a rise of ITT within 10 seconds. Monitor the ITT to ensure it does not exceed limits. And once it looks good, check for fuel flow, N1, and a rise in oil pressure. Remembering we must have N1 by the time we have 40% N2. The star sequence is again complete when the N2 digits change from white to green and both starter lights and the starter disengage light are extinguished. We can now bring both engines to idle and continue with the checklist.